uh, where some strong man orders people around and banishes enemies. I think that it is important for us to remember that we live in a democracy. And by definition then, the way we solve problems is by everybody participating and arguing and occasionally having a compromise. Uh-huh. Welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Former Congressman J.D. Hayworth here to debate the current president. We don't live in a democracy, Mr. President. We live in a constitutional republic. Of course, that was beside the point because the president was uh, getting partisan and getting ready for an election by claiming he's, he's nonpartisan and everybody can get together and make things happen. We want you to join us here uh, in the conversation at one eight seven seven newsmax That's one eight seven seven six three nine seven six two nine. And of course, our good friend for whom this program is named, Steve Molsberg, standing by doing his telecommuting and from the convention hall at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, We've got Milo Yiannopoulos, the tech editor for Breitbart.com. And uh, he is a guy who uh, has uh, offered his point of view, provocative, generating some controversy. Milo, it's great to have you here tonight on Newsmax TV. Hi, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. And uh, last week, you were in Cleveland. I understand you spoke at a Gays for Trump rally. Uh, why, in your opinion, <laughs> yes, should, should gay Americans uh, support Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton? Well, it's very obvious to me why Trump might appeal to gay people. He's bombastic, he's loud, he says what he thinks, he hates political correctness. That seems to me to be entirely in line with gay culture in general. But more important than that, he is the only person who has run for president this year, not just the people who are still standing, but anybody who ran for president this year, who has expressed any seriousness about solving the problem of Islam. And you know, if you look at the speech that he gave after Orlando and contrast that with Hillary Clinton's, it's very clear which president is more pro-gay than the other. Donald Trump, in my view, is the most pro-gay candidate for president in American electoral history. Milo, uh, let me ask you a question, sir. Uh, I want you to respond to what Nancy Pelosi uh, said today on PBS. Ooh. She said, so many times white, non-college educated white males vote uh, against uh, the Republicans. Uh, and she said uh, they vote against their own economic uh, concerns, rather. They vote against their own uh, economic concerns because, she said, of guns, gays, and God. The three G's, she said, and she said God is uh, them voting against a woman's right to choose. What do you make of that, that white Republican males vote against their own interests because of those three G's? Well, they're certainly not voting against their own interests in this election. Donald Trump is a champion of the working classes. He's the champion of the America that the progressive globalist establishment has forgotten about. Donald Trump is the champion of America that thought it was being overtaken by these lobbies from the left, by progressivism, by social justice, by the lunacy of feminism, and by the bigotry of Black Lives Matter. It seems to me entirely obvious that actually this bit of America was voting against their own interests so long as they were voting for establishment Republican candidates. But voting for Donald Trump, they seem to be voting for exactly what they want, which is a, a fix on immigration, better trade, and of course, an end to political correctness. They want the consensus of what you can and can't say that has that has formed a, a, a sort of ossifying, sh ossified shell around academia and the media and politics to be smashed. There is nobody better place to do that than Donald Trump. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to get to the calls in just a second, but Milo, I got to ask you, what is the deal with Twitter? Why can you tweet no more for the rest of your life? Well, I have been banned from Twitter for getting into a fight with a black Ghostbuster. I published a very critical review of the new Ghostbusters movie. It was a critical review because the movie is garbage. And I got into it a little bit with Leslie Jones, one of the stars of that movie. She didn't like that very much. Twitter apparently takes the view, as so many crazy, wacky progressives in America today do, that disagreeing with a black person makes you racist. Disliking a movie that a black person happens to be in, if she's also a woman, makes you not only racist, but sexist too. They've been waiting to get me off the network for months, if not years, and this was the excuse they needed. But as I said on CNBC this afternoon, this isn't just bad politics, it is terribly bad business. Twitter signed their 
own I'm death warrant with this. Doesn't this punch a hole in what we heard Barack Obama say tonight on NBC that we led into this segment with about how we're a democracy and we need different voices and we shouldn't shout at each other? Isn't he basically full of baloney in, this, in a sense? Uh, well, Barack Obama is a massive hypocrite on these issues. He says we should have freedom of speech. He's shown no interest in protecting the First Amendment, and neither of any of his friends in Silicon Valley, nor anybody in the Democratic Party or the left-wing movements ever, you know, anywhere. Feminists are allergic to free speech. Black Lives Matter is allergic to free speech. If you want to be a free speech dissident these days, you've got to be a Republican. It's very loud here, as you can tell. It's pretty excitable. They're getting excited for later. <laughs> well, and uh, a lot of folks are excited to have the chance to come on Newsmax TV with phone calls. Let's go out to Fontana, California, where Juliet is standing by. Hi, Juliet. Hi, how are you doing? Doing fine, thanks. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I have a little to say about Bill Clinton's speech last night. Okay. Uh, Slick, Slick Willie is a really good storyteller, and listening to his version of his life with that woman, uh, you would think that he actually loves and respects her. What about the whole notion, say what you will about Bill Clinton, Milo, but he does have an ability to stand in front of a stage and uh, make those in that irony-free zone that is the Democrat convention just go along with him. <laughs> will we see the same kind of magic tonight from the current president, Mr. Obama? Well, I think Bill Clinton always had what Steve Jobs had, was a bit of a reality distortion field around him. Obama had it for a while, but Obama's has dispersed. I wasn't as impressed with Bill Clinton's speech last night as some people were. I felt that the first third of it was pretty insulting and quite... It, I mean, it, it took a lot of hubris to stand up there and say what he did, taking a feminist perspective, talking about falling in love with Hillary and how proud she was as a woman, given what he did to women over the course of his presidency and what Hillary Clinton did to those women afterwards. Frankly, it was a bit rich. The rest of his speech was his usual aw shuck stuff. I wasn't so impressed with it, to be honest. The problem with Obama is the luster has totally worn off. And any cool fact that Bill Clinton had might be, you know, in single digits now. Any cool fact that Obama had is long gone. He's, uh, he's, not, a pres he's not a popular guy. This hall is going to be uh, all for him. They're going to be grateful for him. They're going to be happy to hear him. But is anybody at home? I don't think so. Uh, let me ask you this question, Milo. In, in much the same way that the left attacks black conservatives who progressives view somehow as traitors to the cause, do you feel there's a strain of anger that progressives feel toward gays who don't fall into line behind the leftist agenda? Oh, of course. And you know what? It wasn't a big deal for me to come out as gay. All this stuff about people being oppressed and marginalized. I've experienced nothing but mollycoddling, pandering, and special treatment as a gay guy. Coming out as a gay guy is the best thing I ever did for my career, and it's the best thing that most people will ever do for theirs. But I'll tell you one thing that was difficult, coming out as a conservative, and the amount of vitriol and hatred and terrible behavior I've had from other gay people for daring to have right-wing opinions on some subjects is extraordinary. Nothing is quite like the hatred and bile and unpleasantness the left reserves for minorities who go off reservation. Whether that's Ben Carson because he has the wrong opinions for a black guy, whether it is uh, any of the conservative women who get so much hate, whether it is Ann Coulter or Sarah Palin or even the late Margaret Thatcher. And as for gays, we get it just as bad as they do. It, the left really doesn't like diversity of opinion and diversity of thought. They like skin color, they like different genders, but they don't like independent thinking at all. Milo, what is it about the gay movement in this country that totally ignores what happens to gays in other countries, and many of those other countries, by the way, have given money quite freely to Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. What is it that it makes them ignore what goes on there and, and what Hillary has done in taking money, but focuses on supposedly Christians in this country? Got only about 45 seconds, Milo. 
Hillary Clinton is funded by countries that execute homosexuals. A hundred million people live in countries in which you can be killed for being gay. But she apparently doesn't see any contradiction whatsoever between sucking up to gays in America and taking money from people who murder us. Uh, the left in this country doesn't seem to have much care anymore for the rights of gay people. What they're far more interested in is policing language, policing speech, and sticking up for weird, crazy, socialist, even communist policies, all under the guise of sticking up for the oppressed. Gay charities after Orlando, which by the way have done nothing for gay health or gay happiness or gay people at all for, for pop probably a decade or more, or they're more concerned really with policing transgender pronouns. What gay charities did after Orlando, in my view, is enough to make... I think they should all be shut down. I think every gay charity in America should be shut down after Orlando. And the left's pandering and hypocrisy on this issue is sickening. But the good news is, lots of gay voters are waking up, lots of gay people are realizing, and lots of gay people are going over to Trump. And uh, the bad news is, we're out of time. Milo you, Yiannopoulos, we thank you very oh, much for your time that. from Philadelphia. You always have a spot here at Newsmax TV. We're not like Twitter. We're happy to have you back. More of the Steve Malsberg Show as we continue right after this.